Home to all the jaw-dropping moments. Home to all the best plays in the league. Home to your favorite players from the cities you love. MLB.tv is the home of streaming baseball. Get your ticket to out-of-market games live or on demand across all your favorite supported devices. Home or away, you'll be able to catch all the MLB action this season and gain access to exclusive content. MLB Big Inning brings fans a special live look into the game and delivers the best highlights from games every single day. That is out of the ballpark! Tune in for select pre- and post-game coverage or check out new MLB originals for a deeper dive into your favorite teams and ballparks. You can even check out inning milestones, in-game details, and personalize your app for your favorite team. MLB.tv has extended their content library for more originals, like vendors and out-of-the-park films. You can find returning shows like MLB Carded, Baseball Zen, and so much more. There's no better place to never miss a moment of the action than with MLB.tv. Stream every game from every team all season long with MLB.tv. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Everyone is howling about Paws of Fury. It's the most fun comedy of the summer. I am your father. What? No, I'm not. <laughs> Michael Sarah. It's showtime. And Samuel L. Jackson. What the mother father cock of spaniels going on here? Paws of Fury. Only in theaters this Friday. Ready PG. Weeder kicks. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Fastball up and in, and they get him this time. A strikeout of Carlson with two on will end things for the Cardinals here in the sixth. No runs. They hit two left. We're going to the seventh. It's one nothing Phillies. Well, good morning, everybody. You heard it. Uh, great, great performance by Zach Wheeler last night as the Phillies beat the Cardinals 2 to nothing. Rob Ellis, uh, it, I'm Glenn Mack now, by the way. Good morning, everybody. Rob Ellis is with me on this uh, fine, fine Saturday. And, Rob, doesn't it feel like... We are back in the time when every Philly series is important, and this one particularly against a team like the Cardinals, who you're battling for the wild card. feels great watching big-time baseball. After a decade plus, Glenn, of being in the wilderness, you know, yeah. we're, we're finally here. You're right. I mean, critical series, early July, games that you're hanging on every single pitch, and, and last night was kind of old school in that sense with both guys going deep. Big plays, guys stepping up. I mean, Bohm hasn't hit a home run in, in a month, and he comes up with two. You win a game where the other guy goes the distance, and you only get five hits. That's what you know. fun baseball is all about, and you're right. We're right there now. By the way, I feel like they've been playing against Adam Wainwright since about 2004. They have, actually. actually. I think they have, right? It was, he's he's 40. He, yes. And he's he, been around forever. He forever. was a veteran when they knocked the Phillies out in, in 11, but you know, let's not even think about that. Uh, well, I know, well, I do always think of that. Of course I do. Um, it was a really important when they had faced the Cardinals five nights earlier. Uh, he, Wheeler, excuse me, had faced the Cardinals five nights earlier, and he had shut them down before. Uh, they are nine and four. The Phillies and Wheeler's thirteen starts, and he hasn't given up a run in the last seventeen plus innings. And his ERA since April twenty eighth is one fifty three, two forty six overall. Definite All Star uh, bid this week, right, Ron? I will tell you, Glenn. We don't talk about it enough. One of the great, if not the greatest, free agent signings. It's it's in any conversation that the Phillies have had, or maybe any team in the city's had. He he has been every bit of what they thought he was going to be, and more. I mean, to hold that Cardinals team the last two outings. To no runs in 14 innings with that lineup? Yeah. It's remarkable. It's great. It's great. And listen, since June 24th, so we're really talking just over two weeks, the Phillies have gone 7-4 and four against Atlanta, San Diego, and the Cardinals, the three teams who they have to battle for those wild card spots. Phillies now are entrenched in the number six spot, uh, which is what you got to get. But they are beating the teams around. They're beating good teams. And they're doing it without Harper and Segura yeah. and, and getting nothing from shortstop, from second base, from right field. It's it's almost unbelievable. It is hard to fathom how they're doing this, but there is there's something different. There's hey, something drastically different. Manager about of the team. decade. <laughs> Amen. Twenty three and ten under uh, the Tomper. I don't know. I don't know why. I mean. Listen, we all know what the weaknesses of Joe Girardi were and how he was reluctant to use pitchers so many nights in a row and he wanted to rest guys and so on and, you know, seemed to be playing more for September than winning games in May and June. But I can't explain why they're 23 and 10. 
I think it's a combo. There's urgency, and there wasn't any urgency with Girardi. It was like you just said. It was always tomorrow. It was always September. Hey, we're, we're you know we're looking at this big picture. You know what? You don't always have to look at a big picture. Take it day to day. And I think that's one of the things Thompson's instilled in them is an urgency. He's figured out the bullpen too, Glenn, in in a, in a big way. And I think you also have had other have had other guys just step up. Schwarber was, let's face it, he was awful in April and and, and you know into May, and he he's been ridiculous since then and he's in large part along with Hoskins just carried this team on their on their backs collectively since Harper went down so there are six games above 500 for the first time this season 24 and 10 since June 1st uh, ahead of the Cardinals um, and by the way head to head if they have tiebreakers head to head is part of it so winning these games against the Cardinals and the Padres and the Braves are really important you mentioned the bullpen um, one of the great stories of this year is Sir Anthony, and I just kind of want your thoughts on that because that's – it's a guy who I really always rooted for and certainly rooted for to get back from just, you know, terrible injury that cost him two years of his career, and it's, it sure seems like he's there. Yeah, I, I'm with you, guy. I mean, I, frankly, I kind of wrote him off with the injuries, and I thought he was just going to be kind of one of those guys who was a flash in the pan and we saw the great arm and what he was going to be a what could have been kind of player Mm -hmm. and for him to come back from I mean two years two plus years and you throw the pandemic in there it's amazing and you know he's a he has real closer stuff as opposed to some guy opposed to some guy who's just trying to kind of fake his way through it so you throw him in the back end and you know and I actually I really like and this is a little bit of a Gabe Kapler thing and you know I'm, I'm gonna throw it out there but I like what Thompson's done in that Hey, if if the killers are coming up in the eighth, guess what? I'm going to throw Dominguez in the eighth, and we'll deal you know hand in the ninth. He's done a really good job. I, I think that's the, the 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 biggest attribute, other than the sense of urgency with Thompson, is the the, the management of this pen. But you're right, Sir Anthony has stepped up in a big way. Hand, and you're doing this without Brogdon too, who I think is going to be a part of that back end. Also, it, it's that's one of the craziest things about this team is the bullpen went from being arguably the worst in baseball. To you know, in the discussion as as a top maybe seven bullpen, maybe I, I mean I haven't done the math, but it, it's it's no longer a weakness, and it is now a plus. And a guy who was a weakness, who was certainly a plus last night, was the third baseman. Let's take a listen to this. Swing and a high fly ball center field. This is well hit. Going back on it is Carlson to the track at the wall, and it is gone. Onto the batter's eye, grass berm, and dead center Alec Bohm. With his fifth home run of the season as he goes dead central against Adam Wainwright, and it's 1 0 Phillies. Wainwright nods yes, here's the pitch. Swung on, hit deep to left. This one's got a chance. Back is Donovan at the wall, looking up, and it's gone. And Alec Foam with a two homer night tonight against Adam Wainwright. One to center and now to left, and it's a multi home run game for Boehm, and it's a 2 0 Phillies lead. Well, there you go. The guy who hadn't hit a home run in a month does it with his parents and his friends making the trip from Omaha. I always love those stories. They show the mom out there yeah. getting all excited. <laughs> and he hits the two. Uh, just a couple other things I want to co- uh, cover with the Phillies, Rob. We'll throw it to our callers, 215-592-9494. We have a lot we're going to cover today and some, in- we hope, interesting topics we're going to get you involved in. Um in in the midst of a six for forty five slump, Odubel Herrera gets the start again in center field yesterday. I guess he got a hit, but he's still Odubel uh, after making that horrible defensive play in Washington the other night. I, I like Rob Thompson. I understand that he said Odubel's hit well against Wainwright over time, but when do they just? glue this guy to the bench or send him packing yesterday it's it, it, there's no way this look there's this weird faction of people who sort of like i i got into it a little bit last night which i never ever do i just reacted to some tom kelly put something out there our tom kelly and then people picked up on it and th- there's there's a weird faction of people that still sort of stick up for him with the justification that moniac stinks like Wait, no you got into a twitter fight with tom kelly? no 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 tom put this thing out there like you know it, herrera's the best you know the best option, all the best of the bad options. The best of the bad options. If that's your argument, that's not an argument. And I don't mean Tom. I mean I'm, I'm talking about other folks. Like Moniac stinks, but that doesn't justify the stuff we've seen forever. 
from Odubel Herrera. There's nothing new here. This is all the same bad movie. It's like sitting down and watching some garbage. It's like watching Caddyshack 2 over and over again. I mean, it's the, it's the same mistakes. <laughs> he makes the same In boneheaded... This equation is Shane Victorino Caddyshack 1? Yes, right. exactly right. It's yes. been a while since we got to see the real good one. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's Jack, it was a Jackie Mason who was uh, the star of yeah. Caddyshack 2. Anyway, Oof. so it's the same bad routes to balls in clutch situations. It's the same... But boneheaded base running it's the same wild inconsistency where he'll be good for two weeks and then stink for a month and a half i i don't I play veerling every day Just, i know he's not great he's serviceable but he's better than odubel and and it, it this isn't even if you take for a second the, the off the field stuff out of it this is just as a baseball player he stinks and yes it's an indictment of the organization that they ha- don't have anything better but enough already Nicely said. Agree with every word you just said. All right, well, let's get to uh, the so-called elephant in the room, which near as I know, Rob, remains caged up because the manager has not yet addressed it. And here's what's going on. This Tuesday, the Phillies go to Toronto for a two-game set against the Blue Jays. We know they will be without, uh, quote, several, unquote, players who have not complied with Canada's COVID vaccination policy, uh, in order to go into and play in Toronto, you have to have your vaccination. We remember last year there was a controversy with some Phillies who declined to get vaccinated. It appears to still be the that that way. Um, I don't. We don't know how many and what they juggled the rotation. Uh, I'm. I, I don't want to start naming names. We. I think I know who some of them are, but I'm not quite sure. I just, my opinion on this thing is, and I, I hate any time this issue comes up, and there's going to be other issues later today, I hate they come up, but this is this is my thought. Um, by the way, the Red Sox lost a game up there last week because their closer couldn't get into right. Canada, this kid Houck, mm-hmm. and they blew a lead, and the Red Sox, like the Phillies, are fighting for a wild card spot. And these games mean a lot. Every game at this point means a lot. We have agreed as a country that people have the right to make a decision whether they're going to be vaccinated. But we've also agreed that there are consequences for those decisions. Certainly in Canada, there are consequences for those decisions. And we are now at the point where those decisions hurt your team, yeah, hurt your teammates. Uh, you put yourself above the team. You put yourself over the community. Um, I cannot imagine that ownership... Uh, the Phillies management and the fellow players are delighted with the personal decisions these players have made, which will put them at a disadvantage when they play in Toronto these next two games. Yeah, the, I mean, the difficulty is this isn't golf or tennis where you're just affecting yourself. As you said, this is a team setting, and that's the biggest issue here. You're talking about a team that's one game up in the wild card, Glenn, and, and you know, it's right there with, with the Cardinals. The Giants are right on their tail. Marlins aren't even that far off right now. So you, you, you're vying. You're right there. You've done a lot to get to this point. And you know, the good news is it's only two games, um, but you may very well need at least one, if not both, of these games come the end of the season. This feels like it's going to be really, really tight. Like I, I don't think the Phillies are good enough to, to run away and hide. So this game or these games could be very critical and could be the difference between the playoffs or not the playoffs. So it's it's a huge issue, actually. It is a huge issue, uh, and I don't know. We'll, we'll learn. Maybe today, certainly tomorrow. Yeah, we were I supposed to learn yesterday, so I don't yeah, know, I know what happened there. I, I, he, I'm sure they're not thrilled. They don't want to deal with it either. No, if you're Rob Thompson, it's the last thing you want to yeah. have to talk about and deal with and figure out, okay, how am I going to put together a lineup if I have three or four guys out? Again, I have heard names, but I'm not, I'm not in a position where I can verify it. I just think it sounds like the Phillies are going to be bringing a 4A team up to Toronto and um, – well, we said it. You hurt your team. Yeah, that's it. Plain and you simple. Hurt your team. Okay, a couple other quick things, and we will address these more as the show goes on. But I just kind of want to tease some stuff out that Rob and I will be dealing with. By the way, two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. Other news: NHL draft was over the last couple days. Flyers draft. I love this kid's name, Cutter Gauthier. That's a great name. Yeah, it's a hockey name, yes. man. Eighteen year old future power forward, hopefully a future center. He's going to play for Boston College next year. And they make a rather controversial trade. Uh, They bring in an offensive defenseman from uh, Carolina, from Sewell, New Jersey, Tony D'Angelo, who's 
uh, who's got more baggage than Philly International. Um, we'll get into that later in the show. I don't know if you want to make a quick comment on that before we dig into it later. Yeah, it's not pretty. I mean, the only thing you can hope is that he's grown up. I mean, that's the only thing that you can hope with some of this stuff. I mean, yeah. when you're talking about you know stuff that went down when he was in the juniors and it's racist and homophobic and it's you know and it occurred more than once, it's troubling to say the least. And you're talking about a team that's trying to build a culture, and you're talking about a, a, a you know, a Tortorella who's a, a flammable guy, right, to begin with, mm-hmm. and he's also had run-ins with coaches, he's had run-ins with teammates. I, it, he's a combustible guy, man. He can play. He had a really good year last year, but there's a reason why he's on his fourth organization since 2017. He's bounced a lot for a young dude. Yeah, so we'll get into the details of that. They gave up a lot for him as well. Uh, reports of James Harden signing a two-year deal with the Sixers. I kind of like it. I mean, I, I wasn't delighted to even have to have him on the team, but I think, again, we'll talk to this in detail later, but I think given the circumstances, Rob, about, about the best you could do. Yeah, my greatest fear, Glenn, was this was going to be opt-in and give him three more because Daryl Morey loves him. And if this is two years, and from what we're hearing, it it's sort of a bet on himself kind of thing. It, it it aids the Sixers and it aids him. In other words, the Sixers have a lot more cap room. He's not killing them from that perspective. Apparently, fifteen million less, according to Sham Sharania. You know that that's a huge discount. And the second year may be a, a player option, which means he's backing on having a monster year, which means highly motivated James Harden. Which, hey, I'll take it. And that's a good thing for the Sixers. This is by far the best scenario that could have happened. This is a this is really good news. I don't love Harden. I would have I would have you know let him walk, frankly. Uh, but in this case, this works and this makes a lot of sense. By the way, nice pronunciation on the Shams part. That's on the Sharania part. I've I've missed <laughs> that you. many times myself. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, we have a caller wants to talk about Harden, so let's we'll go to him quickly. Uh, Bill in Downingtown. Bill, what's on your mind this morning? Well, I uh, I kind of feel uh, the Sixers screwed up in a number of areas. They had Mikel Bridges. <laughs> you know what I mean? They yeah. trade him to somebody that's not even in the NBA now. And then what about Jalen Brunson? I mean, these kids are going over to play defense. Harden never played defense in his life. I knew that was a mistake from the get-go. I mean, the guy, you know what? Stick a yeah, listen I, listen, I I don't argue any of the specifics you said, but I can't kind of package that with Harden. Those are all separate things and then sometimes separate administrations. Well, I would, I would have went after uh, uh uh, Jalen, because he's better at this stage of his career, and he's a young guy. I yeah, mean, Bill, I can tell you, he he was headed to the Knicks. He wasn't heading anywhere else. His dad's there. No. They, they, this was this was a done deal from from Jump Street that he was going to be. Just wave a little bit more money. That's what it all comes down to. And they didn't have the money to wave, right? Well, you don't sign Harden. You, if you don't sign Harden, you could go get Durant too. <laughs> they <laughs> they don't have anywhere near that kind of money, Bill. Even if they don't sign Harden. Well, what would Wilt Chamberlain get today? The whole league? <laughs> yes, right. He would. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, but yes, he would. I don't know. He would get whatever the top player yeah, yeah, look, is paid. That's Glenn, what players get. They we, get the, the best player gets the top money. We could sit here and litigate all the mistakes, and there were tons. I mean, basically, all you have to show from the process is Joel Embiid, which is a disgrace. It's nothing short of it. But I mean, you're, you we're here now. There, there's, you know, would we all love to have Michael Bridges here? Of course, but you know, that's spilled milk. This is best case scenario, and and I I'm not telling you I still don't think Glenn they're better than Boston or Milwaukee mm-hmm. you know you, or you know the usual suspects Miami I still don't mm-hmm. think they are but no, this they, is the best I don't thing think they moved happened. up or down in the standings based on signing PJ Tucker is again nice signing but I don't think it moves the needle no yeah no and uh, again we'll we'll get back to that later we start with the Phillies uh, we will get into the Flyers and the Sixers uh, we're going to talk about the Eagles a biggest area of concern later in the show with Bo Wolf of the Athletic spoiler it's not the quarterback that Bo sees as the biggest area of mm, concern okay yeah uh, we uh, have a terrific show to recommend for what we're watching so I, you and I talked yesterday. I uh, I love you it. You said you were going to check this show out. Yes. How deep did you get? I got three episodes in. Uh, uh, that's where I am. That's yeah. good. And okay. uh, I'm, I'll give you my you know my review in a little bit, but uh, I'm glad you turned me on to it. I'll we going thumbs up, thumbs down? We going thumbs up? 
Uh, up, 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 up. Yes. Okay, good. All right, so we'll do that for what we're watching the 11 o'clock hour, and we will mourn uh, two great ones in showbiz who passed away yesterday. And coming up, Rob and I are going to dive into the issue of how fans and viewers watch games anymore, which, according to surveys, the answer is they don't. Um, there is a generational divide here on how sports fans consume TV. Rob and I will discuss that and invite you to be part of the discussion of all of this. 215 592 9494. 215 592 9494. He's Rob Ellis. I'm Glenn Mack. Now, it is Saturday morning on 94 WIP. Baseball is everywhere you are this season with the MLB app. Enjoy the show from wherever you are when you download the free MLB app to your mobile device. Never miss a second of the action with coverage of in-game highlights, pitch-by-pitch features, select live broadcast coverage, and more. more. Show support for your favorite team with customizable MLB club-branded icons. And And tune in to exclusive premium content for every team in the league. That is out of the ballpark! The MLB app is your ticket to all things baseball all the time. You can even get live notifications sent to your phone, watch, and car, so you're always up to date on the biggest breaking news, scores, and standings. The MLB app is your hub for live baseball everywhere you go. The number one source of live baseball on your Apple and Android devices is the official app of Major League Baseball. Download the MLB app today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. Additional subscriptions may be required. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. It's fun to meet your friends at Fridays. It's really fun to go on a Friday's flavored adventure with new Frajitas. And it's really, really fun to get free chips and queso and $2 beers. Come on, let your Frajita flag fly right now at Fridays. Every search you make, every click you take, they'll be watching you. Tired of companies like Google and Facebook watching everything you do online? There's actually a simple solution. DuckDuckGo. It's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, email protection, and more. All for free. Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with the push of a button. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. In 1970, a 28-year-old recent law school graduate became the most wanted woman in America. She's also my mother. I'm Zaid Ayers-Dorn, host of the new podcast, Mother Country Radicals. When I was growing up, my parents were on the run from the FBI, at war with the U.S. government. From Crooked Media and Odyssey, Mother Country Radicals, a family history of the weather underground. Listen to the entire first season of Mother Country Radicals right now, here on Odyssey.